the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And the Lord God said to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. And so the man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all the living. Formless and void, but God's Spirit was hovering over the face of the waters. And as God breathed his word, order came from chaos, and God created in six days, culminating in the creation of humanity. He breathed into the form of Adam, and he became a living being. And from his side, God took the rib and made a woman. And so he placed them in the garden. And there he told them they were free to eat from any tree of the garden, except for one. And in the day they ate of that tree, they would surely die. The devil took occasion by that to tempt our mother Eve, the mother of all the living, as she would be called by the end of the account in Genesis chapter 3. God would make a promise of a savior, the seed of the woman who would crush the serpent's head. And he sent them forth clothed with animal skins, with what came from the sacrifice of the living. All of this is getting us to Jesus, of course. And of course, that then involves the working of the Holy Spirit. Remember what we said at the last video, when God breathes, there's his spirit at work. When God speaks, there his spirit is at work. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all involved in God's creating. God the Father, God the Holy Spirit, and as we've heard already in John's Gospel, the second person of the Trinity, the Word of God, who would then later on become flesh for our salvation, that we might be made new again, that you might be grafted into Christ and made a new creation in Him. The Holy Spirit is involved in all of that, as are the Father and the Son. Remember, we confess the Holy Trinity, three persons in one divine being. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God, and yet they are not three gods but one God. The Father is Spirit only, and the Holy Spirit is Spirit only. The Son was Spirit from all eternity until becoming one of us, conceived by the working of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, to suffer under Pontius Pilate, die, rise again, ascend into heaven, where he remains forever, both God and man. He is the only person of the Trinity who became what you are, true man. That means truly human. Male, yes, but for us all, whether male or female, that in Christ Jesus we might be made one in Him. The third article of the Creed involves the working of the Holy Spirit, which we may not seemingly hear as much about, since Jesus says He will testify of Jesus. The Father loved the world this way. He sent his only begotten Son into the flesh, conceived by the Holy Spirit, as we've already said, that whoever believes in him by the working of the Holy Spirit might not perish but have eternal life. Not only is the whole Trinity, 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit involved in the first creation, but the whole Trinity is involved in the work of the new creation, that which was done for us in the life and the ministry of Jesus, coming into the flesh as the Spirit worked and as the Father gave. And now that he is seated at the right hand of the Father, the whole Trinity is still at work in saving you, in saving all who come to a genuine and living faith in Christ Jesus. It's the Spirit who works that, who calls me by the gospel, enlightens me with his gifts, sanctifies and keeps me with Jesus Christ in the one true faith, even as he does for the whole Christian church on earth, and that means you as well. The Spirit works through the Word, and that's important. It's easy for people to get this wrong, and we hear even Christians getting it terribly wrong. Jesus never directs us to our hearts. He says, out of the heart come sin, adultery, evil desires, all the stuff that mm, makes a person unclean. That's the original infection that Adam got going in us all when he departed from God's word. And so we ought not look to the Spirit's guidance on the inside. That's a dangerous place to look. How will you ever be sure? Is it the Spirit? Or is it just me? Is it my desire? Or is it God's? What does God want me to do with my life? Let me look inside myself and see. In some respect, that's not that bad. In another respect, it's deadly. In the beginning, God said to Adam and to Eve, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden. They didn't have to wake up in the morning and go, Hmm, does God want me to have a banana today? Or should I start the day off with a pear or a peach? Whatever you want is fine with me, says the Lord. You're free after all. He has said so. Except for the tree at the center of the garden, there you are to learn faith through fasting faith in the word of god holding firm and fast to everything proceeding from the mouth of the god who made you and loves you and wants to keep you with himself and when you depart from that that's death and adam and eve learned that and ever since we've been trying to learn that anew daily and much as we desperately need if you want to know God's will for you, listen to Jesus. Jesus says, my sheep listen to, hear my voice. I know them and they know me. The Holy Spirit works in and through what we call the external word of God. Jesus says that the Spirit will convict the world of sin because people don't believe in him. And that means you and me. Lord, I do believe. Help thou my unbelief. God says, don't be anxious. Don't be afraid. Fear not. And yet in these troubling times, we seemingly are terrified of our own shadows and yet boldly, daringly, going on our own apart from Jesus and his ministry? That's dangerous. It's as if we just didn't take him seriously. You know, the way you don't take it seriously when the teacher says, this paper is due on such and such a date, and your mom and your dad say, have you got started on it yet? And you say, later. And then all of a sudden the deadline arrives and, <gasps> Panicsville, how am I going to get this done? 
I'm sure you've experienced something of that to some degree or another. If not, <laughs> wait till college. Wait till the bills come due and you've been irresponsible with the stewardship of your money as you often are with the stewardship of your time. God says, have no other gods, and yet we run off with so many other interests captivating our attention, our lives, our time, our energy, our resources, that it's like we hardly have time to spend with Jesus and his word. The Spirit will convict us that we do need Jesus. He convicts the world of sin because we don't believe the way we should. We don't keep the commandments the way we should. We don't trust Jesus as we should. And he convicts us of righteousness because Christ has fulfilled the will of his Father by dying and then rising again for you and your salvation. And he is seated at the right hand of the Father where we don't see him right now, but he continues steadfast working in and through his church. And so we hurry to be served by Jesus. That's something that only the Holy Spirit will work in us. A true faith to look to God's word, whether spoken or preached or taught to us by the pastor in the church or by a Sunday school teacher or by our parents in the home or as we ourselves read Mark, learn, and inwardly digest God's saving word in our daily lives. God would teach us to find our refuge and our peace in Him. And so the troubling things that occur are opportunities. The devil will always use them to scatter God's flock, to drive us into despair and doubt and other great shame and vice, into entanglements that can only choke out faith and leave us far less prepared by God in his word than we are with other things. We make sure that we learn the hobbies and interests, the sports, the pursuits, the passions, the careers that we want very well. We learn them. We master them. And yet after years and years of school or years and years of chasing a ball around a field or doing some other activity, are we nearly as practiced in the Word of God? in the faith that Christ has given to the saints? That's something to ponder, because Jesus knows how Jesus means to keep you safe and sound. And so the Spirit not only convicts us of our sin through the law, as we have heard already, and of righteousness through the gospel, which is the creed. That's what we're talking about that God the Father who made all things has loved you enough to send you his Son who has loved his Father and his neighbor as himself and even better than himself, laying his life down to save you. And now that he is risen, he goes on breathing out his Spirit through his Word, through his church, through his ministry, that you are not only gathered in to Christ by faith, but kept with Christ in the same. This is of greatest importance because Jesus also says that the Spirit will convict the world of judgment because the ruler of this world, the devil, who once overcame our parents by that tree in the garden, unseating the word of God in their hearts and minds by asking, did God really say? Can you really be sure of what he said? It's not really as he says. The devil just unravels the external word of God for Eve, and Adam goes along, and that's been our destruction ever since then, back to formlessness and void, and the Hebrew is 
tohu avohu, confusion, and all of the stuff that we're dealing with right now. It's always been like this since Adam and Eve cast us back into it by departing from God's word. But since the promise of the gospel, since God clothed them himself, God's been trying to order your life and mine in Christ Jesus with his word. He will come again as he has promised to judge the living and the dead. The devil is already judged and cast down. And you, the baptized, have been buried with Christ through baptism and raised up again in him. You've been given new birth by the water and the spirit. And by that, God intends to order your existence, your life here in time and also for eternity. He does that as he continues breathing out his spirit whom we need to be actively at work within our lives daily and much. In the third article of the Creed, we confess that by saying, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. That is the work of God's Spirit from beginning to end, from his hovering over the waters at the start in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, to his hovering over Christ at his baptism, the descending of the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, upon the second person of the Trinity, Christ Jesus, as he was baptized by John in the Jordan River, and over him. The Father spoke, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And he speaks the same of you in your baptism, where the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit work to give you new birth in Jesus Christ. Apart from the Spirit, you will not believe that. Apart from the Spirit, I will not believe that. It didn't take but that long before Eve did not believe it either. All the devil had to do was say, Did God really say? And she was a goner. And Adam with her. And if perfect people fall that easily, do not take it for granted. Despite a pandemic, despite all of the wonderful things God has given you to be involved in here in time, do not disregard your desperate need for Jesus and his spirit working in and through his saving word. And so let's confess together the meaning of the third article of the creed. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true.